basic moves with your homemade self-defense walking stick. These are all for self-defense. The very first thing I want you to see is that your walking stick is gonna be held just with your hand on the top. You can use any kind of walking stick, but this is the homemade self-defense walking stick. I make these out of oak. You can go to any do-it-yourself store or hardware store, pick these up, you sand it down really well, you wanna put oil on it, you wanna soak it in oil, or at least put a lot of heavy oil on it for a couple of days and then wipe it off with a rag so that it doesn't make your hands too oily. I use butcher block oil, and this is an inch and a quarter in diameter and 36 inches long. This is also known as the Japanese Okinawan Hanbo, and it's just 36, it's a, a standard size. Hello, it's good to see you, Seven Sun. So you're gonna start with your hand here. The first thing that you're gonna do is slide your hand down the front of your stick. So if you're looking at it from the side, you can see my hand comes here, and then I'm just gonna point my thumb at the threat. So we're gonna say you're the threat, slide your hand down the front, point it at the threat, and now in this position, you have the long side coming out of your thumb, and you can use it in a jabbing motion, just shoving it right into the soft tissue of its face, smashing the nose or the teeth. Hello, Ian, hello, Alita Battle. It's teeth, eyes, into the throat, anything you can remove or destroy for self-defense. From this position with this simple thrust with one hand, you can bring it to your shoulder, and then come in with a strike coming at the angle into his temple or into the side of his neck, into his body, bring it from the other shoulder, strike in here, maybe going down to the legs or into a wrist. Maybe he's reaching out with something, he's got a knife, he's trying to punch you or grab you, and you're just gonna smash his hand for self-defense. So this first basic technique, self-defense using your homemade walking stick, sliding down the front, point the thumb, thrust, striking from one shoulder, striking off of the other shoulder. Now, if you bring it off your shoulder, it's always gonna run right into him. Hello, Garen, it's good to see you. Coming right in, smashing to the side of the head or into the jaw, but it has to come off of your shoulder. If you don't bring it off of the shoulder, if you bring it out here, it's not gonna be as strong, you're gonna put too much pressure on your shoulder, and he's gonna wrap, he's gonna come in, close that distance, your arm is gonna wrap around him, you're never even gonna hit him. But if you put it here and you bring it straight forward, hello, Doug, it's good to see you. Uh, Doug asks if I've ever made my own length, uh, longer Hanbo. Doug, I've got all sizes over there. You can go to the hardware store and you can get a longer, a 48 inch, and then cut it down. So the answer is yes, I have a 40 inch, I have a 48 inch, and I have 54 inch, which is usually the Joe size. So you can call it whatever you want. The Hanbo is traditionally 36 inches, but it can be a little bit longer. If you're a taller person, go if you're a shorter person, go for the height and the size that makes most sense to you. This first motion, five basic moves with your self-defense walking stick, sliding down the front. Your hand simply does this. Now, the second thing I want you to see is instead of just using one hand, which is always gonna be a compromised grip, that means if he grabs hold of it, you're gonna be in trouble. You're gonna to wanna to get your other hand on it really fast. So you can start that way, where instead of just holding one hand and pointing your thumb, you can bring it up into the other hand. And by bringing the thumb up, pointing your thumb at the threat, that pops it into that front hand. So now in two hands, you can step in and thrust in a much stronger position. You're gonna hit him with a lot more force, and then it's gonna be harder for him to take it out of your hands. You're not gonna give him time to grab it anyway. You're gonna shove it right through his teeth and bring it from your shoulder and striking, coming down across his temple, anything you can remove or destroy for self-defense into his jaw, into his neck, into that upper arm, or you can slide your hand down the front and push the back side through. Notice how you slide your hand along it so that you do two things. You increase the length and then you increase the force in the speed of the strike by pushing your hand as you're turning your shoulders and hips and then bringing this across. Now from here, you can bring it into a two-handed thrust from the opposite position. So you started here with the hand down the front, just like your first strike, point the thumb, catch it in the front hand, step in and thrust for a stronger thrust, bring it to your shoulder, chop to his neck, strike across his body, and then you can bring it down, two hands, striking on top of his head, you can bring it up. One of my favorite strikes is to bend your knees, get lower than he is, and then load up your springs or load up your legs, and then unload them as you lift and strike up into his face or his throat or his solar plexus, anything you can hit. Now think of, I like to think of a uh, rifle, right? 
in the military when you are going to be closing with for a close quarters battle with the enemy they're about to run your lines or you're you know you're too close they say fix bayonets you're running out of ammunition fix bayonets you take that big long knife that you carry on your belt and you stick it there on the end and then you're ready to hook and jab hello tony it's good to see you and from here this would be considered a bayonet thrust so you're using your rifle now as a pole or as a stick because it no you can no longer use this function so you're using it here and then you bring that back that rifle butt through as you hook and jab across and then bringing the rifle butt into for self-defense into his body it's very effective all from the second of the basic five basic self-defense moves with your homemade self-defense walking stick sliding down the front point the thumb thrust you can bring the back side through bring it down at an angle bring the back change your hand grip over the top of the head you can it, there's all kinds of ways that you use it just from this position hello gr beck it's good to see you gr beck's in the uk now number three instead of bringing your hand down the front i want you to bend the knees as you slide your hand and again i'll show you from the side coming down the back so we were like this for the first two strikes but the first two basic techniques, second base, third basic technique, is just coming straight back on the side. Now this is gonna put the short side coming out of your thumb. One of the advantages of this is it's gonna be harder for him to grab hold of it as you stick it right into his face for self-defense. From this position, you're again loading up the springs or your legs, and then you're unloading as you bring this up into a strike, and you can bring it forward into a thrusting motion, right into his teeth or his nose or his throat for self-defense, and you can turn your thumb over so that it now comes across the long side, either coming horizontally or coming up and dropping at an angle, just turning it over, and it's very hard, it's very fast, it's hard for him to see that and for him to stop that. It's gonna hit him before he realizes what's coming at him. So from here, you're in this position, you're walking down the street minding your own business, the threat comes up, you give a verbal command, this hand is always up and open, back up, don't come any closer, I will defend myself, he keeps coming, you bend the knees, strike this way, bring it across this way, pop it into the other hand, and here we are with the rifle and the bayonet again. From here, this basic thrusting motion, slide your hand down the front, that's the benefit of using the smooth homemade self-defense walking stick, now your back hand comes forward, as you turn through your shoulders and hips, generating massive power. Hello, Ronald, it's good to see you. So you're coming from here, coming through, striking here, bringing the back side through again. There's that slide of your hand where you're doing two things. You're extending your reach and you're also pushing against, that's why you, you really wanna sand this, make it nice and smooth, but you're pushing against your staff, your hanbo or your homemade self defense walking stick to accelerate and increase the speed and the power of that strike. Here, bring it here, maybe bring it up over your head and straight down on top. And again, you're sliding as you push forward. It's accelerating, it's increasing the speed and you're hitting with a lot more force than you normally could if you were just trying to chop like you're chopping wood. You're bringing this down. I didn't mean to hit the camera. Good thing it was kind of uh, smooth. Uh, Bluebird said he was attacked by a guy with a shovel any moves you can defend. If it's a shovel, uh, most people will attack with a stick, a knife, a shovel, a machete, a hatchet. 70% of the time, according to police reports and video camera footage, uh, it's almost always coming in this angular strike. They're either chopping like this, or they're slashing like this, or they, they're hitting like this. If you can close the distance, it's your instinct, it's our instinct to move back. When you move back and someone's swinging something at you, you give them room to just follow through and generate more speed, more power, more devastation in their strike. So if you can, always move in. I know it's counterintuitive. Put your guard on, put your helmet on like this, both hands up as you slide in, trying to smash the fa fa his face with your elbow. Now, if you're using a weapon, you have something that you can deflect you can bring that in, but I'm always gonna say, hello, Addy, Addy's in England. I'm always gonna say, close the distance if you can. Never, it's, it, but it's hard. You've gotta train that instinct out of yourself 
your instinct is always to recoil. And most people, when they recoil, they also ex expose the softest tissue where the tendons and the nerves and the veins and the arteries are. And then you get sliced up really bad. If you're here, you put that bony, hard bony part out, then you're gonna be in a much better position. So putting the helmet on, bring your hands to your head. And if you have a weapon covering up like this and sliding in as he brings in his tool to try to smash you, his tool of, of offense and, and destruction, you use your tool of self-defense and you come in and you get as close as you can and then you do your work in as close as you can, sticking that elbow straight into his teeth, into his nose, into his eyes, all the soft tissue into the throat, which is a fatal strike. But if it's for life or death and you want to go home, then you have to do that. And if he's swinging a, a shovel at you, that's life or death. Uh, so, uh, the question is, can I make the, a, um, a, how I make these sticks? Yes, absolutely. I just got some sticks in this uh, morning. We'll give a class on how to make these. The answer is yes, I'll do that. At, uh, we'll, we'll try to do that later today. If I have time, usually I've had some time in the afternoon. I'll show you how to make your own homemade self-defense walking stick. I will even sand it for you. I'll show you the three grits that I use and the oil that I use to soak it in for days. Now, if you want your own self-defense walking stick, then I have a link below and I'll send you ones that I make and sell here and use in my classes or save your money, invest your time and make your own. They're super inexpensive. Hello, Richard. It's good to see you. All right. So our first technique was down the front with a single thrust and the strikes. The second one was a two handed strike. The third one, I have you coming back here behind and then coming up, thrusting first, swinging second, third, get it into this hand and pushing. Now the fourth thing that I want you to see is that you're holding your hand like this and you're just walking with it. And I get this comment all the time on this channel and people say, I've never seen anybody walking with a stick. People don't walk with sticks. And I understand that might be a place where some people live where no one ever walk, uh, carries a stick, but I was in a completely different neighborhood yesterday, different community. Uh, I can't even remember why I was there picking somebody up or dropping somebody off or something. Oh, I know what it was. Yeah, I was going to a course, a very fun, uh, this was on the weekend, a very fun um, protective self-defense course to train to be your own sentinel, kind of at a high level, something that I've done for a long time that I don't talk about on this channel. And it was out in the middle of nowhere, but I turned down the street and the, my ways was sending me the wrong way. And, and I pulled in this really nice, ritzy neighbor of massive mansions everywhere. And I saw it, a man and his wife, someone I assumed was his wife, their dog and his stick. And it was the exact same length as the stick. And I wanted to say, hey, can I stop and take your picture? I wanna put it on my channel because people don't believe me when I say that I see people carrying one of these all the time. There are two people in my neighborhood that I see carrying them on a weekly basis. And so I was in a totally different neighborhood, totally different part of the state. And again, I saw it and I see it all the time. So you can carry a stick and people carry them when they walk their animals down here, especially where I was kind of out in the middle of nowhere. There are cougars, there are or panthers, there are panthers, there are gators, lots of gators, there are bobcats, there are coyotes. And then there are other uh, dog owners who dogs off the leashes. And then there are other dogs. There are dogs that run, run in packs that have been just discarded on the side of the road because people can't take care of them and, and, it's, and it's happening more and more. And so yes, more and more people are carrying these. So let's say you're carrying your walking stick just like this and you need to immediately get it into the fight for self-defense. So the fourth technique or the, of the five basic self-defense moves is I want you to turn your palm up and notice how that just pops it into that other hand. These are gonna be two-handed techniques. So from here, you're walking, here comes the threat, whether it's another human or uh, an animal, a human animal or, or a vicious uh, dog, a couple dogs that are going after your animal or going after you, and then you're gonna pop it into this hand. Now from this position, you have this thrusting motion from both sides, you can push the backside, you can bring it in this way, you can bring it down on the top of his head. I'll show you how to walk your hands so that you go from one hand position to the other hand position. This is something you can practice from here to here. So you're striking here, striking here. Maybe you have to lift as a block and then change techniques. You can do all that from this position. So you're pushing, 
thrusting, striking, and you've started like this. This is technique number four of the uh, five basic ways that I want you to train when you use your self-defense thing. Um, thank you for that comment, uh, saying smash the, th uh, the like button. I appreciate that. All right, so from here, the fourth technique, just turning it up, and the fifth te technique is turning it over this way. Now, this is five out of hundreds of techniques that I'm going to show you on this channel if you like and subscribe, so please do that so that you get notification. I think you also have to hit the subscription or the notification bell, um, but whatever you want to do, that's fine. Oh, and I got some more work done. I know some of you are waiting for the... Um, hello, Marcel. It's good to see you. Some of you are waiting for... The certification pages, I'm doing a certification program where you can get certified to teach the self-defense walking cane, and then I'm also doing a certification if you wanted to do a general certification in teaching all the different sticks, because I, I teach bow, joe, hanbo, tanbo, all the different sizes, and then, of course, the uh, side handle baton, we're going to do one of those this week, the tonfa, and how to use that, but if you wanted to learn those things, and, and, and again, I don't, I don't think you need it, if you wanted to, to teach it, then you might want it for your confidence. And if you do, I'm glad to help. But if you want to just teach it and you want to watch all my videos here, I've got almost 2,000 videos on this channel, another 1,000 some on my Facebook, then you're welcome to do it for free. I don't, I don't mind following my thing. And then everyone, if you want to send, but if you want to be able to send me some videos, have me critique them, give you some, some uh, feedback. And then if you want to earn a certification after a certain level of training, then I would love to do that and be able to help you if that makes you more confident as an instructor. Turning your hand over, getting it in two hands, and then I want you to smash him right through his teeth for self-defense. In this position, you can also box his ears. You now have created a leverage by putting both hands on your stick and by turning your shoulders and hips, you can hit a lot harder. You can go up to the temple, you can go into the body, you can go down into the knees or into that vicious animal. You have a two-handed thrust this way, two-handed thrust coming back the other way. You also can slide your hand along it the same way you did when you had your split grip, and it works almost as effectively. It's, it feels a little bit different in your wrist, but when you turn your shoulders and hips, it's not gonna hurt, and you're gonna, it's gonna feel really strong. So from here, striking this way, striking this way, thrusting, and again, one of my favorites, bend the knees and come up into the body. When I did the pugil sticks at Paris Island, in the Marine Corps, it was unfair for me. Uh, pugil sticks and boxing. I had a lot of boxing experience, and one of the kids, you know, this is a million years ago when I was a kid in the Marine Corps boot camp, and the one kid ended up having a um, concussion, had to go to the hospital. But it's because most people don't learn how to fight. But I grew up fighting and in martial arts and in boxing and judo and then with a lot of weapons. But when we got to the pugil sticks, which represent fighting with that rifle and the bayonet on the end, I really uh, was successful. I was successful, really successful with both of them because I had, like I said, I had a lot of training, a lot of guys, other guys didn't. We got to do that in two rounds, one just in training and then another at the end. We had like a big field day, almost like a, a games day. And then I dominated in that event. And my favorite technique was to bend and change levels. It's as simple as bending your knees. Changing levels means bend, bend your knees. Same thing in boxing. If you hit the body, you've got to change levels, bend the knees to hit the body. As you hit them, you come back up. You're also slipping out of the way so you don't get hit. Same thing happens with your pugil stick, or in this case, your hanbo, self-defense walking stick. You bend your knees, change levels, get under his level, and then you unload and come up into the solar plexus. You'll lift somebody off the ground with that hard, forceful strike. You're also hitting nerves in there. You're hitting that solar plexus, which is a a plexus of coming together of all those nerves, and you're gonna, it's gonna cause him to go flying back, knock his wind out. And remember, it's all about what you can remove or destroy for self-defense. It's the basic principle of self-defense. I'm gonna put that link in the link below. I forgot to do that, but it's Tim Larkin. Tim Larkin's book, When Violence is the Answer, is my, in my opinion, the gold standard for mental training and understanding the difference between martial arts and self-defense. This is not martial arts. We use the martial arts techniques and we use the martial arts weapon, self-defense tool, the hanbo, but we're really talking about self-defense principles, which is all I'm concerned about as I get older. I could care less and less about some of the things that I taught for most of my life and learned. 
Now it's all about practical application. How do I stay safe? How do I keep my family safe? How do I keep you safe? What do I need to uh, teach you? What do we need to talk about in this channel, this global dojo, this virtual dojo, that keeps us all safe? What can we share with each other? So from here, from this position, I'm in two hands, and you got there just by turning it this way. And again, don't forget this basic motion right here, whether it's split grip, it works this way, or it works this way. Just shoving straight in. It's such a simple, it's like a, a front kick in martial arts. A lot of people never learn or use the front kick once they learn the round kick and all the other fancy kicks because the front kick seems too simple, but you can win a lot of fights just by boom. <laughs> just, just two punches and a kick right to the chest, right to the middle of his body. Ian, it's good to see you. Yeah, train to, uh, to beat the bully, not to become one. It's all about self-defense. And the other thing that I want to say about self-defense along the, those same, same lines is that we want to, when you know that you are, the, 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 his attack is imminent, that he's going to hurt you, that he's not backing up, you want to be the first mover because the first mover has the advantage. You want to close with and destroy. That's a principle of self-defense. You want to use violence of action. And I'm not, again, we're not talking about beating up, uh, punching a, a, guy, a guy earlier, someone said a sh uh, someone's swinging a shovel at you, right? So if someone is swinging a shovel at you, they're not just, uh, they're, they're, there's, there's no, it's like so if somebody pulls out one of these or one of these, it's life or death at that point. Someone has a machete coming at you. Someone's coming at you with a bottle. Somebody's coming at you with a chunk of concrete trying to crush your skull in. It's not about a street fight anymore. It's not about, um, you know, a schoolyard bully. It's, it's, it's life or death. So if we're talking about defending against that, I want you to be the first mover. I want you to come in and close with and destroy and take advantage of that first mover advantage. I want you to be in there and be as close as you can. Um, that's the close with and destroy. I've seen it over and over again. It, it, every time a person backs up, it, it, it doesn't end well. Either they get obliterated, smashed into the ground, sliced up, lose you know fingers, all this stuff. But when they come in, they close that distance. Even if it's not a weapon, if they don't have a weapon, it's just a bigger person or multiple attackers, and you need to take him out fast because you've got two or three of his buddies coming up trying to uh, take your life or take your dignity or hurt you. You want to be able to step in and put that helmet on, put the hand here, smash in with that elbow, go right for his face, right for his nose. And again, uh, Tim Larkin, I think that's how I started this part. Tim Larkin's book, When Violence is the Answer, I'll put that in the link below. If you want one of my sticks that I make, um, I'm getting ready to switch over. We're still making an, an oak, but eventually I'm going to have uh, some more options, some harder woods as I start to get into this. And I'll show you how to make your own. If you want to save your money but invest your time, then I'll show you how to go get one of these for less than... These are up to about 12, 14 bucks now. So they're not, they're not as cheap as they were. You, you can get a smaller diameter. I also have one that's just an inch. If you want an inch, you can do an inch. But I like the, the weight and the heft of an inch and a quarter out of oak. But for less than 15 bucks, a little bit of sandpaper, a little bit of oil, you've got the perfect homemade self-defense walking tool. And those are the five basic techniques. So I'll be back, like I said, later today, I think we'll do a video on how to make your own. And then later this week, I'm getting the PR24 out, the side handle baton, and uh, that's based on the Japanese tonfa or the Okinawan tonfa. We're gonna go over the tonfa, however you say it, <laughs> this week and how to use it in case you have a pair or you've ever wanted to make your own or you ever wanna train with it, then we'll do that. You guys have been awesome. I'll see you in a little bit. Thank you.